within and go ahead and pray the city of Kano. Father, let your peace be. Within your peace be. Let your peace be. Let your Let your peace be. Let your peace be. In the land. In the mighty name of Let Jesus. Let your peace reign. Let your peace reign. Let your peace reign. Your rain. peace that passes in the land. understanding of men. In the mighty Let name of Jesus. In the land. Let your Let peace reign. reign in the land. Your peace that passes all understanding of men. Let it reign in the land. Let it reign in the land. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Today's service is start special anointing service, which also doubles our, as our covenant day of healing. So we shall be saying, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Answer today's service is start Go ahead and special anointing service. Father, in which today's covenant also doubles day of healing, our covenant day doubles as our anointing service. So we shall let it answer maximally. In our life, answer to his name. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Father, in today's covenant day of healing, we doubles as our anointing service. Let, let today's answer, service answer to his name in my life. In my life. In let our lives. Go ahead and service prayer. team answer to his name in my life. In today's anointing service. Let today's service answer Which to his name in my life. Our covenant day of healing. Let, Let today's be miracles. Service healing answer to his name in my life. In all the services today. In today's anointing service. Let there be signs Which and wonders as our covenant day of healing. Let there be miracles. At the instance of healing of your word in all the services today in all the services today that will bring about healing to every worshiper let there be signs and wonders at the instance of your word in all the services today that will bring about healing to every worshiper Let today's service team answer to his name in my life today. If I were you, I would pray this prayer fervently. I will pray this prayer with all sense of seriousness. Let today's service team Let today's answer to his name in my life today. Team, answer to his name in my life. If I were you, I would pray this today. prayer fervently. Father, I told me to pray this man. prayer with As all I'm anointed today. sense of seriousness. Father, glorify Let me. Today's As I'm service. anointed today, Tim, answer Father, to his name in my me. life. Heal me. As I'm anointed Let today, there be waves. Father, told me to another man. As I'm anointed today. today, Father, glorify me. As I'm anointed today, Father, deliver me. Heal me. Let there be waves. Let today's healing miracles in all the services answer today. maximally in my life. It has been that the anointing service. Lord, anoint me afresh. Lord, anoint me afresh. Lord, anoint me afresh. Let today's service team answer maximally in my life. It has been that the anointing service. Lord, anoint me afresh. It is our covenant Lord, day of anoint healing. Me afresh. Father, Lord, anoint me afresh. Let there be waves of healing miracles. Let there be waves of healing miracles in all our services it today. It is our covenant. Let there Father, be waves of healing miracles. Waves of healing in all miracles. our services today. Let there be waves of healing miracles in all our services today. Let there be waves of healing miracles in all our services today. Cause the blind to see. 
Let the lame walk. Let there be signs and wonders in all Let of our services see. today. Let the lame walk. Let there be signs and wonders in all of our services today. In the few minutes that we have, you are going to ask God for one, one specific thing. One thing in the we few are, minutes that we have to ask of the Lord. You are going to ask so, God for one, one specific thing. I'm going to leave you for a second. One, or one two thing minutes. we just are ask the Lord. to ask of the Lord. One specific so, thing that you want I'm to go to leave you for morning. a second. One or two minutes. Just ask the Lord. One specific thing that you want to go home with this morning. That specific need, that desire of yours, that in today's service, that specific need, that by the instrumentality desire of yours of God's word, that and in today's service sent our way by the instrumentality shall of not God's word with me today, and His servant sent our way. Pray that issue for yourself for shall not return home with me today. You will pray for yourself. Pray for yourself, for no one can pray for you the way you will pray for yourself. Lift up your hands to heaven. Celebrate the Most High God for answer prayer. You are sure. That they lift up your God hands to heaven of signs and wonders that God visiting for you today. You are sure that the God of signs and wonders is visiting you today. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a resounding hallelujah. Somebody shout a louder hallelujah. Praise the Lord and finally Somebody on the shout a resounding hallelujah. Let's lift up our voices and this year on the covenant highways of life. Lift up our voices and our hands. Let's lift up our voices on this wonderful covenant day of life. Lift up our voices and our hands and appreciate the name of the Lord for bringing us to His presence again. Let's lift up our voices for the gift of life, for the bread of life. Hey, sure, have a share of our voices this morning. Thank you, Him. From the rock depths of your heart, glorify the name of the Lord. So God to say, He said to do for us today. Ensure heaven is hearing your voice of appreciation. Thank Him sincerely for bringing you on the altar with the anointing for drawing you to His presence. For bringing you on the altar with the anointing for drawing you to His presence. This morning, to change and transform our life. Thank him for the world that will be coming your way. Lord, I am this morning. Right now, Lord, send my word today. Send my word today. Lord, I am grateful. Lift up your voice. Right now, Lord, send my word today. With the word send my word today. He send the word. Lift up your voice. Lord, I am grateful. Lift up your voice. Send my word today. Lift up your voice. He send the word. Lord, I am grateful. Lift up your voice. Send my word today. Lift up your voice. He send the word. Lord, I am grateful. Lift up your voice. Send my word today. Lift up your voice. He send the word. Lord, I am grateful. Lift up your voice. Send my word today. Lift up your voice. He send the word. Lord, I am with the anointing, right. put my wall in the mouth of your servant, even today. I'm sure heaven is hearing your voice this morning. Lord, I'm sure heaven, heaven is hearing way. your voice this morning. <clears throat> Lord, Lord, send me a counter way. by your wall, even today. Jesus, Lord, grant me a counter by the your wall, of your even today. today. Jesus, let your put your wall let in the mouth of your servant. Let, let, let your wall be 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 let
Perhaps you have the series and document the pastor of meeting at the Lord Jesus. Put your hands on the Hallelujah. As we receive the choir. Put your hands on the Jesus. Hallelujah. As we receive the choir. Hallelujah.
the kingdoms of Christ this morning. Aha! Clap offering, shout Hosanna. Please, you may have your seat in his presence. Praise the Lord. I am finally on my covenant hour of life. On behalf of God's servant, the first vice president, Bishop David Abioye. And God's servant, the state and resident pastor, 
I welcome everyone to this covenant day of healing. Glad for Jesus. Now we welcome ourselves to service for this call to worship from the book of Psalms 124, verse 1 to 8. Please turn your scriptures to Psalms 124. I will take verse 1, you take verse 2, all through to 8. Now, verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, verse 2. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, then they would have swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us, verse 4. Then the waters out of our windows, the stream of the universes. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul, verse 6. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us a spirit to their teeth. Our soul is escaped, say amen. As a bird out of the snare of the fowlers, the snare is broken and we are escaped. Amen. Verse 8 together, I want to go. Our help is the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Clap more for the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Please let's listen attentively to the following church announcement. Number one, you are welcome to this prophetic visitation and covenant day of healing service. Expect to be liberated from all form of sickness and diseases via the prophetic word and the mystery of the anointing oil. Two, the prophetic focus for the month of June 2023 is a season of glory. Recommended books of the month authored by Bishop David O. Oyedepo include Fanning Revival Fire, The Wisdom That Works, Walking in Wisdom. All these books are available in the Dominion Bookstore and prices are affordable. Kindly pick your copy. Also available on www.domionlinestore.org, Amazon Store, and Apple online store. Three, please be reminded that we are all expected to follow up on all our new converts, ensuring that they attend both Sunday and midweek services, WSF meetings, Believers Foundation class, and partake in water baptism. Remember, God who sees your tireless labor in secret will reward you openly. Say amen. For Covenant Hour of Prayer host tomorrow, Monday to Saturday in the following locations. One here in this church at the Tins Church Overflow 1. And the time is 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. While other centers still remain 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And that is Benny International School, Yankaba. Standard Foundation School, 24A on each road by Goku, Sabongeri. Endeavor to make use of this one hour with Jesus to open up your day and as an avenue for your spiritual enhancement at any of the location close to you, be blessed as you attend. Say amen. amen. Five, morning and evening prayer and gospel read for this season of glory enters its third week tomorrow. The morning prayer holds 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Monday to Friday and evening prayer read shall be from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. except on Wednesday. Morning gospel read holds by 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m., while evening gospel read shall also be holding from 6 p.m. Praise the Lord. Six Believers Foundation class holds tomorrow Monday by 6 p.m. at the Overflow 2. The school is for all our new converts, new members, and old members who are yet to attend the class. If you are a first-timer in today's service, endeavor to attend the class tomorrow. The Lord will enrich you the more. Say amen. amen. Seven our midweek slash communion service holds this Wednesday, the 21st of June, 2023. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and meet by 6 p.m. to break with the communion. Eight, water baptism. There shall be water baptism by immersion 
on Saturday, 24th of June, 2023, at the church outside by 10.30 a.m. All those who are here to be baptized by water in mansion are encouraged to partake of this vital kingdom requirement. Come along with your holy Bible and a change of clothing. Nine special youths, a flame section for this season of glory shall hold today, Sunday, 18th of June, 2023, immediately after the third service. All youths and youth executives are admonished to attend. Ten special outreach through crusade. There shall be special crusade on Tuesday, 20th of June, 2023, at Abedi by New Road, through Festing Road by 6 p.m., and on Friday, 23rd of June, 2023, at New Road by Court Road by 6 p.m. All brethren and WSF officials at this location should take note. 11 Winner Salt Life Fellowship, a house to house fellowship host this Saturday at our WSF centers. And time is 5 to 6 p.m. and 6 to 7 p.m. at respective locations. Locate the one nearest and time convenient for you and attend to be part of this loving family. We shall be taking the concluding part of our WSF focus for this month, which is serving God pays the most. 12. Next Sunday, 25th of June, 2023, shall, shall be our covenant day of marital breakthroughs. I thought you put those hands together for Jesus. It shall also double as our end of the month Thanksgiving children and marriage dedication service. Come expecting an encounter with the prophetic word and the mystery of the Thanksgiving. 13, good news. Beginning from next Sunday, our services timing shall be as follows. Please take note. First service, 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Second service, 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And third service, 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 a.m., which is our special miracle service. We are all required to come along with our family members, new converts, invitees, and other loved ones to partake of the wonders that await us in the service. Jesus is Lord. Put those hands together for Jesus as we continue in the service. Praise the Lord and finally on my covenant highway of life. It is testimony time. Testimony are proof that God's word works. The word of God is going to work in your life today in Jesus' mighty name. With a clap offering, can we welcome the following to share their testimony? Faith Ramsin, Elder Wosu Chijoki, Yaru Godwin, and Blessing George. Blessing George, Yaru Godwin, Elder Wosu Chijoke and Fred Ramsin. Come up. Your name and straight to the point of what God has done for you. Praise the Lord. I am Elder Wosu Chijoke. I've come to return a glory unto the Lord. Last month, we declared our month of open door. There was this door that has refused to open. Then last Sunday, it was announced that a prophet is coming away. I went home and meditated, and the word of God told me that if I receive a prophet, I will receive his reward. And uh, that particular week, that was on Thursday precisely, that job was delivered into my hand. I returned to the Lord. Hallelujah. You have your open door today in Jesus' mighty name. Let's keep celebrating God. Your name is Faith. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Faith Ramsin. I joined this commission 2020. I'm here to give God all the glory for what he has done in my life and family. Last month was our one-year wedding anniversary. And before our one-year anniversary, God blessed us with a bouncing baby boy. Praise the Lord. Your marital breakthrough is today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And God in Yaro by name, by the special grace of God, 20 years ago, I started a business. I was believing God to break through into federal government or state government. I have a friend that break through into federal and state government. 
I was telling him, how do you break through? He said, Aru, follow me. I followed this guy. I never knew that. He was carrying me to Habali's house. He took me to Habali's house. I, I said, no, they, this is what I bargained for. Behold, the man said this one, this one, this one. I went home. I went to the night of a dream. God showed me a dream in the Jeremiah 6. And I said, I'm already neat. I, I discovered that it's opposite what I'm about to do. I hold on to my God. To God be the glory, to God be the glory. Therefore, yesterday, I received a call that, uh, that his commander from so 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 place, Navy. I said, ah, Navy. I thought it was a 419. Behold, I went there. I met the commander. He said, congrats. Go around. I went around. I want to say, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Your own breakthrough, business breakthrough is coming in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on my covenant highway. I'm here, my name is Blessing George. I'm here this morning to the glory of God and to the shame of the devil. On Thursday, I'm at home. I started feeling some bad feeling concerning my mom. That's why we say travel, travel. And I wake up on Friday. I travel down to Kaduna. I met my mom and my daughter safely. On Friday, I went for sanctuary. On Saturday, I went for sanctuary. I came back. When I came, my, my daughter was feeling so out. That mommy, what I said, what is this? He said, I'm feeling it. I said, it is well. My younger sister came, started treating her. On Sunday night, the girl was around 12. I woke, something woke me up. I, so I said, praise, what is the matter? I said, nothing. And what is the matter? I said, nothing. Later, before I know, my daughter, no, my mommy said I should took her to the bedroom, whether I want to eat. I took her. Before, I, before she would bend, my daughter turned up. Immediately, when you want to turn, I grab her. I feel a change. I started losing her. I said, no. Affliction shall not rise the second time. I will not bury my child. God of The God that answered David Oedipo, show up to me. Show your mercy. Remember your word in Exodus 23. Remember your word in Malachi. I practice immediately my baby jack up to life. And when, before I know... And when my mom with fear, my mom started, because my mom is a fear type, my mom started purging, do everything. And when we call my younger brother, when they came, they said, ah, what is the problem? Praise the Lord. Her son jumped back to life. Can we celebrate God with a big, big love offering? Your testimony is next in Jesus' mighty name. Why not put your hands together after Jesus this morning for those powerful testimonies? Praise the Lord, I'm finally on my covenant highways of life. This morning, it's my privilege to welcome a number of very special people into God's presence. If today is your first time worshiping here at Living Faith Church, No Man's Land Cano, on a Sunday morning like this, may I kindly ask that you please stand on your feet and remain standing in the gallery, on the ground floor, anywhere. Please put your hands together for Jesus as they stand up in their numbers. Our God is worthy of praise, is worthy of honor. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. Our officials are all over the place around you there. They will put a welcome slip in your hand. Please fill the forms. As soon as you get your slip, you can sit down and be filling your form in the course of this welcome. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and also his servant in our midst, Bishop David Abioye. Why not put your hands together for Jesus? Now, what is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a mountain of divine interventions where every issue that has defied solutions can be supernaturally perfected. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over four decades, that is 40 years, surprising members of this church with unimaginable testimonies as they believe. Since God is no respecter of persons, expect the turnaround God to visit you also on this mountain as you believe. Are you putting your hands together for Jesus? I want to welcome you today to this turnaround family, and may today be your entry into the realms of divine interventions that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies 
in Jesus' mighty name. Why not say a big amen to that? Amen. Therefore, we say to all our first-time worshipers, welcome home. Give Jesus a big round of applause again. Right now, may I please once again ask our first-time worshipers to rise up on their feet for a word of prayer and blessing. You're a first-time worshiper, please rise on your feet for a word of prayers and blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for bringing this, your sons and daughters, into your presence this morning. And we ask that whatever it is that is a challenge in their life, you are the God of intervention intervene speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. As you have brought them on this covenant day of healing, let every aspect of their life that needs healing be touched in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray specially for any one of them that is yet to meet Jesus as a Lord and Savior, may today be their day of salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Please, first time, our first time worshipers, be on your seat once again. Hallelujah. Please make sure you complete your forms and hand over to the official that is standing next to you. Be blessed as you worship with us this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together for Jesus as we continue the service. If this club is for Jesus, let's do it better. Praise God. The atmosphere is charged already. I know you are waiting for your own miracle. A God's servant, our first vice president who came on this mission in special, did not come alone. He came with his wife. <laughs> Pastor Mrs. Mary Abiyoye. If that clap is for Jesus, do it better. You are welcome. Place you may be seated. Praise the Lord. I'm finally on the covenant highways of life. Congratulations. It is offering time. Now bring out your offerings and let us honor the Lord. God has done us well. This is the third Sunday in the month of June. God has preserved your life. Money cannot buy what the Lord has done for you. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6 verse 38, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men, not shall angels, shall men bring to your bosom. You are here, you are making transfer. I want you to check on the screen and follow the instructions accordingly. You are also given in checks, please, in favor of the church, Living Faith Church, Kano here, and No Man's Land. So make sure you write it correctly and follow all the instructions on the screen, and God bless you as you obey accordingly. Amen. Amen. And you are here, you are giving joyfully this morning. So don't give because you are being coerced. Please give joyfully so that your blessings can return back to you hundredfold. Rise up on your feet with your offerings in your hands, your tight and all your commitment, label them as you rise up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come with our offerings. It is our privilege to give this morning. And this offering will not be the last offerings we will give. Terminate every form of financial sufferings in the name of Jesus. Lord, see to it that every one of us begin to flow in financial abundance. In the name of Jesus, everyone paying their tithe, Lord, we ask that nothing will be tight again for them in the name of Jesus. And everyone giving online, 
and you are also paying your tithe online or making transfer. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat and cast your offerings joyfully while the choir minister.
other soul steering praise from the choir. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Please let's have a seat. I believe somebody is set to receive something this morning. In Acts chapter 3, Peter said to that man, the beautiful gate, he said, Look on us. Something is about to happen. In John chapter 5, verse 2, beginning, he said, Now there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Now the word Bethesda means mercy. Having five porches, in this lay a great multitude of imported folks, a blind, hot, wither, waiting for the move of the water. Verse 4, for an angel, say with me an angel. Amen. By privilege of every this morning, we have an angel in the form of a human being. For an angel went down at a certain season, say with me at a certain season. It's our season of glory. So an angel has come in this season of glory to steer the water and trouble the water. And whosoever then first, say me first, will you be the first this morning? Say I will be the first. First after the troubling of the water, stepping was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Say me whatsoever disease. So your task this morning is to jump in when the pool is busy here. Don't be like this man for 38 years. He was in one spot and his excuse, I have no man. You don't need a man. All you need is God. And the servant of God is in the house. Rise on your feet therefore. And I want you to pray. Because this visitation is once, 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 once. Lord, I won't let you go except you bless me. That as your servant come this morning, Send my word. Put my word in his mouth. Would you like to pray that prayer? Lift up your voice and let heaven hear your voice. This is my service. It doesn't matter the disease. Whosoever jump in when the pool was here was made up of whatsoever disease. There are no incurable disease with God. There are no terminal disease with God. Someone lift up your voice this morning. Let everyone hear your voice. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. You are coming out of every Egypt of affliction. Look at that area that the devil has been tormenting you. And he's saying to you, no hope for you. Hope has come this morning. Because the arrival of the prophet is the arrival of solution. With them, with the prophet helping them, agent of help is in the house. Target that area, that sickness, that affliction, that stagnation, that frustration that must come to an end. Pray in your understanding, pray in your spirit. This is my day. Jacob said, I won't let you go except you bless me. You cannot afford to wait for another time. That man waited for 38 years. This is your time. This is your time. Lord, this affliction, this high blood pressure, this diabetes, this fever, this stagnation, this oppression, this suppression must come to an end. Let it be so. Thank you, Jehovah. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord said to Moses, Say unto the people, And they have declared to my ear, So shall I do unto them. With privilege of heaven this morning, We have God's servant, Our first vice president, Bishop David W. Bringing the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Please lift up your holy hands. Let's worship the Lord together. Is the reason we are gathered together this morning. Somebody worship him. Raise your voice before the Lord. 
talk to him as your father. Let him know you are here this morning, no assumption. Father, I'm here this morning. I'm here for you. I'm here to be blessed by you. I'm here to be healed by you. I'm here to be revived. I'm here to be touched. Oh, somebody just worship him, worship him, tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you are expecting his touch this morning. Lady I'm blown the king of long the she the nan in our nam don the gidean dollar sadaba. Worship him. Let your heart be melted before him. Let your heart be in union with him this morning. Get connected, get connected, get connected. His presence is here. His presence is here. His presence is here. Lo mononde gala gala tanda la baba. Oh, somebody just raise your hand and worship him. There is healing touch here this morning. There is salvation here this morning. There is deliverance here this morning. Yes, 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 yes. He's touching someone right now. You'll never leave this place the way you came in. You'll never leave this place the way you came in. You'll never leave this place the way you came in. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have worshipped. Thank you, Lord. He touched me. Yes, Jesus touched me. And Lord, what joy that fills my soul. Something happened. Something your hand everybody and sing he touched me yes receive his touch right now he touched me
up everybody before the Lord now receive your wholesomeness receive your healing receive your miracle everything God dead in your body comes alive this is your certain day you are returning home with wholesomeness thank you mighty father in Jesus precious name amen announce to your neighbors you will soon hear my testimony are you sure they are hearing you well glory to God they will soon hear your testimony thank you Lord oh by now somebody is clapping to the Lord somebody is shouting unto God with a voice of triumph amen God is a good God praise the Lord I'm finally on the covenant highways of life congratulations amen and amen please get seated I can see you clapping for the Lord again it's worthy thank you Jesus my wife and I are honored and blessed to be among these wonderful winners at Living Faith Church, No Man's Land in Kano here. Looking at the congregation this morning, I can see a smile on every face, which is a sign of triumph. Satan will never tamper with your joy again. By this service today, you are changing into next levels of your joy. Amen. Nothing good will stop working in your life. Amen. Whatever wasn't working before begins to work right now. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And you'll be glad to hear that I brought to you words of blessings and greetings from God's servant, the apostle of the, over this commission, Bishop David Oedeko. May the blessing and the grace of God upon his life and upon this commission be fully loaded upon your life today. Amen. We have come to you this morning with the fullness of the blessings of the gospel. You are going to live here this morning fully loaded. Amen. I thought I'm praying for someone. Amen. Loaded with the blessing of the gospel. Amen. The blessing of redemption you will no longer be robbed of what belongs to you. Amen. We are in our season of the midst of the year. And as scripture has prescribed, every everlasting mountain around your life shall be dissolved. Amen. Perpetual hills will give way. Amen. And you will have thorough fear. Amen. The second half of the year, when we are done with the midst of the year, shall answer greatly in your life. Amen. Say another loud amen. amen. Before we receive the word, may I, on the behalf of the leadership of the commission, specially commend our leaders in this assembly. Beginning with the pastorate, we'd like to thank God for our wonderful pastors who have been serving us in this assembly as a team, beginning with our state pastor, and resident pastor, our assistant resident pastor, the associate, and every other pastor in our midst. Shall we say together, thank God for our pastors. If there have been a blessing to you, beginning with the resident pastor, say it again, thank you, Jesus, for our pastors. In honor of Jesus, let's give a big hand for how God has been using them to be a blessing to us. Also, we have our wonderful leaders who helps, who assist the altar in handling administrative and technical issues in the church. We refer to them as statutory bodies comprising of the church board, the local church council, the finance management committee, the audit committee, our council of elders, the Dickens Board, the local schools board, um, 
their chairman and vice chairman and all who are serving in one way or the other as well as our unit leaders every one of them working every day making things to work i'm sure you would like us to acknowledge them again today by giving jesus another big hand for them <laughs> hallelujah may god's blessing rest upon each and every one of them amen. i thought you were saying amen to that amen. and for everyone here serving the lord in one way or the other particularly in this season of the midst of the year winning souls praying kingdom advancement prayer everything you are doing god recognizes and i'd like you to know that your labor shall never be in vain amen. if that prayer is for you receive it with a loud amen, amen. raise your hand everybody if you can i declare that your soul winning endeavor shall bring you great rewards amen. your prayer for kingdom expansion will keep expanding your destiny amen. in jesus wonderful name so shall it be someone is ready for the word of god this morning he sent his word and his word healed them for your hearing the word this morning you are going back home with total healing Amen. perfect healing Amen. full wholesomeness Amen. raise your voice speak to god right now send me your word again somebody is doing that right now and god is visiting you no assumption thank you mighty father in jesus precious name we pray amen the prophetic focus for this month is a season of glory what is it say it call it the way you want it now if you close your mouth you are reducing your chance to be blessed because god blesses you in line with what you say you say nothing, God does nothing. You say much, God does much. For surely, as these people have spoken in my ear, Numbers 14, 28, so will I do. It is your mouth that gives permission to the hand of God to work in your life. Say unto them, and I'm saying to you, as truly as I live, God speaking, said the Lord, as ye have spoken, you have to speak. As you have spoken in my ears. That means every time you speak, God hears is open. So, according to what they have spoken, will I do unto them. What will God do to you? Let me hear you. What will God do for you? That's why he says, open wide your mouth. And I will fill your life. The size of your mouth in opening determines the access of God's blessing into your life. You know, some houses, the doors are very narrow. So fat people cannot enter. Amen. <laughs> You want fat blessing? Wide mouth. Stop saying I don't have. Otherwise you never have. When I didn't have, I didn't stop saying I have. I've never told anybody I don't have. Individuals have come to me and say, hey, can you lend me or borrow me one million? I say, why not? Why not? Come back tomorrow. That means it is there, but not on ground yet. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and when you come the following day, whatever is available, if it's 100,000, check. This is 1 million and 100. <laughs> it's a miracle seed. You go with it. The 1 million you are looking for will be is inside it. And never say to anybody I don't have. That's why I've not stopped having watch what you say with your mouth this month is what <laughs> say it again <laughs> what does that mean no more shame yes. no more reproach yes. no more begging yes. no more lack yes. no more want yes. what season is it for you you are saying it in church now will you say it when you get home yes. 
Will you say it tomorrow morning? Yes. Will you say it when they said the door is shut against you? Yes. Don't mind the happenings. Make the declaration. Stop describing your situation. Start declaring your expectation. Now, it's our season of glory. And glory comes in weights. It comes in weights of the world. For as we behold him, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. As we behold his word, God's word is agent of change from glory to glory. Get ready therefore. This coming week and indeed all through to the end of this month, you'll be swimming in glory. Yeah. What did you hear me say? And what are you saying yourself? Confirmed. Yeah. Our series of teaching every Sunday is understanding the blessedness of a revival. What is revival? We're looking at part 3a this morning. Revival simply means spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening. When everything called dead comes back to life. When the things that are dying are brought back to fullness of life. Can the young men here please take your seat? That's what revival is. Spiritual awakening. I declare right now as you are hearing this word, everything dead or dying in your life shall be awakened. Amen. Now let your amen show that you are awake. You see, utterance is sign of life. A quiet church is a cold church and therefore a dead church. Now, listen to those three words I use. They are synonymous to death. When a man dies, he's quiet. Silenced. When a man dies, he's cold. When a man dies, he's ready for the grave. You need to show that you are not dead or dying. How? By speaking forth. So one of the things that take place in revival is that people speak out. They make noise. God loves to hear the noise emerging from the voice of his people. Don't you see that in a situation where somebody is sick in the hospital and the person is not speaking it, everybody is jittery. You be like, Papa won't die. Oh. Eh? Papa won't die. Oh. Papa won't die. Oh. <laughs> and then when somebody calls from the hospital and says, Papa, don't speak. Hey! Rejoicing. Rejoicing is a sign of revival. He said rejoice and be glad for the Lord will do great things. That's why you will discover that only noise making church are growing churches. And you know what? When your church is making noise, neighbors will complain. How? Satan went inside them to be complaining. They are disturbing us. We don't want them here. Is a devil speaking through them. But when there is life, there is revival, you see excitement, fire falling down. From today, everything about your life is fully revived. Amen. Uh -huh. Let your amen show it again. Amen. See, Satan doesn't want you to talk. He doesn't want you to make noise. He doesn't want you to talk. David said, I shall not die but live. And so he did not die. Revival is spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening. That's why only spiritually vigilant brethren, believer, can catch up with revival. Jacob said, the Lord has been here. And I didn't know. Genesis 28, 16. He said, the Lord has been here and I knew not. You know, somebody 
can be physically be in a place and it doesn't have the effect of what's happening around him that's why the scripture says awake thou that sleepest Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 awake awake let me tell you about awake it's revival time wake up is he waking up hallelujah <laughs> Matthew 13 25 Jesus said while men slept the enemy came and planted us while men slept sleeping time is gradual dying time sleep is a practice of death because you are either unconscious or only at best subconscious there are many in church who are dying they are sleepy and so things are slippery for them you know when your eyes close your hands drop you can't catch things tangibly when you are sleeping that's why you have to stay awake many are losing their health too many things are happening to them because they are sleepy sleepy satan takes advantage of sleep to come while men slept the enemy came so stay awake and the devil will run away stay awake matthew 13 25 don't be like ephraim according to scriptures in Hosea chapter 7 verses 8 and 9 Hosea chapter 7 verse he said ephraim is as on turn cake ephraim he had mixed himself among the people people can recognize you again as christian because you are suffering like they are suffering ephraim is a cake not turned you know what i'm talking about when you are frying kose one side may be burning and the other side is not cooked that's why they turn the cake they turn it many believers are not turned that's why it is not yet their turn for things to turn to them it's like an unturned cake it is time for us to turn to our root and let people know what christianity stands for christianity is not a title it's not an emblem it is what they call people who follow christ we don't call ourselves christian it is outsiders who call us christians by reason of what they see in the first church they saw they were like christ so they looked at it what name shall we give to these people and they call them christ like christians children of christ image of christ that's what a christian is an image of christ a representative of christ an ambassador of christ you need to ask yourself is your life representing christ that's who we are in the light of this two quick more definition what is a revival or how do we know when revival is on a revival is a move of the spirit that steers the spirit of man to commit to kingdom advancement endeavors what does that mean when revival breaks forth it is an indication that the spirit of god is moving among god's people and the evidence of it is their commitment to serving god in soul winning if you are not a soul winner you are not revived you hear the truth properly every true revived soul we want to win souls for jesus the spirit of god will move him to winning souls to praying for the kingdom because according to scriptures in the day of his power in the day of the move of the spirit the people shall be willing psalm 110 verse 3 specifically they can read it from verse 1 the people shall be willing in the day of revival revival comes to stir up willingness in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning that has a deal of thy youth they will be jumping and leaping like young people to the street in the neighborhood to ensure that things are getting done say loud amen, amen. 
in Agai chapter 1 from verses 5 to 14. When revival broke forth, the people got ready to walk. Now therefore, thus hear the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. That's the message to us this morning. Consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat and yet you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is no warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag of holes. You see, when you don't follow the way of God, you'll be struggling. I don't struggle. No. Everything I need comes to me. Because I follow his word, seek him for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I live in the realm of additions. Stop living in struggles. Change your class to the realm of additions. Where you are not looking for things, yet you don't lack things. Say loud, amen. amen. You will get there. Amen. If you do what we do, you will see what we see. If you follow our footsteps, you will arrive at our destination. God is not partial. He's blessing me not because I'm a pastor. He's blessing me because I'm following him. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. He didn't say, be a pastor and I will make you. He didn't say, be a businessman and I will make you. It is not business that makes people. I'm telling you, there are people struggling every day. They wake up in the morning, run through the day, struggling, submitting application, sending their CVs and sending their complimentary card and nobody's listening to them. They knock doors. Doors refuse to open. I don't knock doors. When I'm coming, doors open. I've never pleaded or requested to enter any government house in my life. Yet, if I want to be there tonight, nobody can say no to me. I only need to be there and the doors will open. I'm not talking of yesterday. I'm not talking of five years ago. I'm not talking of 10 years ago. I'm not talking of 20 years ago. I've never appeared in any place and they turn me back. Why? I'm following the shepherd, the one who owns all the key. The one who opens and no man can shut. The one who shut and no man can open. You will get there. Yeah. I say you will get there. Yeah. Let the spirit of God move you into action. Let the spirit of God move you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verses 3 to 7. When there was no move. Nothing was happening. The people were struggling. For a long season Israel had been without a true God. You see, wherever God is absent, crisis will be present. And without the teaching priest and without law, where there is no law, everything will be low. And when they are in their troubles, they turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him. He was one of them. We need to turn to God. This is trouble season. We need to turn to God. We need to turn to God. Church people, we need to return back to God. And in those times, there was no peace. If you are without God, you will be without peace because God is the author of peace to him that went out, not to him that came in, but great vexation were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And nation were, was destroyed of nation and city of, 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 and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. Wherever there is God, there is advancement. If he's not there, adversity will be present. Therefore, be strong. So me, I'm strong. Say it again. Say it again. And let not your hands be weak. Don't let your hands be weak. Walk and your walk shall be rewarded. I'm telling you what I'm enjoying is the rewards of serving God. God rewards those who serve him. As a child of God, you are entitled to inheritance. But as a worker, you gain access to rewards. There are two different things. I don't claim promises. No. No. I live in the covenant of rewards. He rewards me every day. He has not allowed me to lack anything. He has not allowed me to beg for anything. He supplies all my needs according to my labor in the services of his kingdom. Somebody say loud amen. amen. Stretch your hands here everybody. I declare that your hand be strengthened to work. Amen. Your hands will be strengthened to serve. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Another loud amen. amen. Number two, what is a revival? A revival is a move of the spirit which is ordained to terminate all frustrations and afflictions of God's people. Thereby, turning them into an envy of 
their wall. Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 17 to 20. The Lord I God in the midst of thee is mighty. So when we allow him into our midst, he demonstrates his might. How? He saves souls. He rejoices over all with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. When God is present, these are the things that happen. He gathers all those who are sorrowful for his solemn assembly who are of thee. To whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time, what time? The time of revival. I will undo all that afflict thee. Somebody say loud, amen. amen. This morning, every affliction shall be undone. Amen. Say a revived, amen. amen. And I will save all that is stagnated and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame. What will God give to you? Praise. And what? In every place where they have been put to shame, in the place of shame, you will enjoy fame. In the place where you have lost your name, you will gain a new name. Amen. I say God is giving you a new name. Amen. God is giving you a new name. Amen. Let your amen show you are truly revived. Amen. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2, the prophet prayed them, Revive thy work, O Lord. Revive thy work, O Lord. And as a result of the revival, in verse 6, Everlasting mountains began to give way. Perpetual hills began to clear off. And then it was declared in verses 17 to 19, even though there is no sign yet, the fig tree does not blossom, there is no fruit in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and all of that, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. And as I do so, he will be my strength. And he will make me to ride upon my high places. That is the ultimate of revival. To make God's people ride upon their high places. You lose nothing being in revival. You rather gain everything being in revival. Say loud, amen. amen. Shout, I am revived. I am revived. May you remain so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's come closer. We're talking about general revival. Let's look at how do you know as a person when you are revived or not. You see, self-examination is very critical. Self-examination. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Examine yourself. Whether you be in faith or not. God has programmed his word to help us to examine ourselves. Second Corinthians 12 5. Examine yourself. Check 12 5 or 13 5. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. To know whether you are in the faith or not. Say loud amen. amen. Examine yourself. How do you examine yourself if you are truly revived or not? When you are truly revived, you will be pressing for the word of God. You will be thirsty for the word of God. You will be longing for the word of God. Your attitude towards God's word is an indication whether you are in revival or not. What does that mean? Ask yourself. When last did you open your Bible for personal study? It's not only last Sunday you came to church with the Bible. And after the service, you dub the Bible. And what kind of Bible is itself? Genesis chapter 1 is not there. Revelation chapter 22 is not there. So you don't know the beginning and the end. You are wearing nice shoes. Wonderful headgear. Let them check the Bible in your hands. You are pricing how much do they sell Bible? But you didn't price how much they sell the necklace. And that one you borrowed money to buy it. You cared for your body. But you didn't care for your soul. And your soul is the engine of your life. They tell you to buy the recommended books of the month. You don't know. There are many cities here. They don't know where the bookstop is. They don't know it. They buy. They tell you to buy messages and be listening to it. The words of life. You refuse. That's why Satan is riding on your ignorance to oppress you. 
For you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You shall be ignorant and Satan will keep oppressing you. Your affection for the word is indicator that you are revived and you continue to be revived because the word of God is the quickener, the revival of the soul. For the word of God is quick. The word of God is alive. You cannot be dwelling on the word and not be alive. Are you examining yourself? I'm not hearing you very well now. <laughs> you better get up, do something about it. Do a schedule for yourself or daily study of the word of God. Daily study. God's word is food to the soul. If you are not acquainted with the word, you become spiritually lean. You become feather weight for the devil. Satan came to Jesus. And how did Jesus respond? It is written. It is written. From the well of his soul. It is written. And what happened? And Satan left him for a while. Satan is always with you because there is no it is written inside you. The word of God is the sword of the spirit by which we wage war with the devil. Many are swordless. That's why they remain defeated. The Lord said to Moses, take this rod in your hand wherewith you shall do wonders. Exodus chapter 4 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. The sword of the spirit. Say it loud, amen. amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Is it hitting you too hard? Huh? I don't mean to expose anybody. Incidentally, there are many seated here this morning who don't even have Bible in their hand. Thank God for the Bible in your telephone and in your uh, whatever you call it. But you need real original. The it is written. Not it is computed. It is written. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know why you need it? Because in your telephone you can be distracted. Because the same telephone where you have your email is the same telephone where you have uh, social media. So as you want to open one scripture, Satan just appears to you with one, one funny thing. And then you get distracted. Get proper Bible. Get proper Bible. When you want to study, get proper Bible. I carry my own everywhere. It is written. Not computed. Huh. Say loud, Amen. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 34. Let's quickly run for time. Jeremiah 31, 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me. You see, at revival time, everybody wants to know God. Everybody is craving for God at revival time. For they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them. Children are hungry for the word. Adults are hungry for the word. Pastors are hungry for the word. Members are hungry for the word. Say the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. Everybody can know God. Say with me, I want to know God. <laughs> David was not called to be a prophet. But he ended up being a prophet because of his desire to know God. Oh Lord my God, hell will I seek thee. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14. At the river time. He said, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall fill the heart as the waters covers the sea. Second of first Peter chapter 2 verse 2. He says, for us, we should desire the sincere milk of the word of God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. To desire the sincere milk of the word of God. Luke chapter 5 verse 1. Luke 5 1. The people pressed on Jesus for the word. They pressed on him. Many people come to church today for different things. But they came to Jesus to press upon him to hear the word. That's where many people are missing it in church today. Many come to church for miracles. Not coming for the word. Many come to church for social contact. Not for the word. That's why we are missing it. They pressed on Jesus to hear the word of God. Chapter 6, verse 17. They came to Jesus 
to hear the word and to be healed. Hearing the word precedes healing of the body. You can't go after the word and not be revived and not get your heart's desire. Somebody say loud amen. amen. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 1920, the word of God prevail. Now, number two, how do you know that you are personally revived? When going to church becomes your way of life. When going to church becomes your way of life. When church is no longer far for you. You travel kilometers to visit your friend. But when it is church, you say church is far. That shows where your heart is. David the king was attending church service 10 times in a day. Three times to pray. Seven times to praise God. Seven times to praise God. Three times. Psalm 55 verse 17. Morning, evening, and noon will I pray. His heart was panting after the house of God. As the day panted after the water broke, so my soul longed after thee. Psalm 84 verse 1. He was a lover of the house of God. There are people who come only on Sundays. And even that Sunday, he's already checking his time. He's checking his time. Because his mind is elsewhere. Your passion for the house of God is an indication of revival. If you don't love the house of God, you are not yet revived. Say loud amen. amen. Let your amen show you are revived. Amen. Psalm 122 verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know why the first church was full of power? They were always in the house of God. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 46. Daily they were there. Daily, daily, daily. Somebody says, is he every day we'll go to church? Check the act of the apostle. Find out why was God moving among them and let us do what they did. But they continued daily, daily. Say with me daily. daily. I didn't hear you very well. Daily. daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with singleness of heart and gladness of heart. Chapter 5, verse 42. They were there daily. Acts of the Apostle 542. They were there daily, 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 daily. And daily in the temple and in every house. They ceased not to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. Daily, daily, daily. Now, listen to this. Before you were born again, remember the joints you used to go to every day now? Every day. You are there every day. You're on your way and they tell you there is traffic. He said, it doesn't matter. I will soon get there. At 11 p.m., they tell you it is 11. He said, the day is still young. You are never in the hurry to be there. But today you come to church, you claim to be born again, come to church, and you are in a hurry. You are in a hurry. You came late, and you are the first who wants to leave. Because your heart is not there. May you be revived today. Amen. I say may you be revived today. Amen. Nothing will stop me from going to church. When I gave my life to Jesus, I was 16 years old then. I remember a day I trekked long distance, about 10 kilometers to go to church. Because I would not beg anybody to give me money to go. I must show my love to God. You see, sometimes when you lack things, that's the best time to show your love for God. That's why Paul the Apostle said, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Not famine, not hunger, not nakedness. Some of us sit there, we need to trek long distance to the house of God to prove your love to him. You are at home because you claim you don't have money to go to church. That's the day you should trek to church. Is somebody with me? You know, we live today in what people call a modern world. They think that Christianity can be modernized. No. Christianity is truth and truth cannot be modernized. Truth remains the same. And truth we met, we remain the truth we live. When we're no more here, say loud, amen. amen. Say with me, revive me, Lord. Lord. Now, as we close on this segment of teaching, what are the benefits of revival? What do you gain when you're in revival? <laughs> Many people don't understand this. Financial fortune is unleashed upon engaging believers in a revival. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look at me here. I am revival made financially. 
I'm revival made. Running after money is not what makes money. Running after God is what brings money. Running after God. Running after God. I've never seen anyone who truly pursued God and ended in poverty. One day I went for so many. I was returning. Somebody called me. Can I see you? I said, why not? And he gave me $2,000. And God told me that's the reward of your outreach. Few weeks after, somebody has called me. I was returning from outreach. Can I see you? I said, why not? He gave me $10,000. God said, that's another reward. That's how I'm enriched. Serving God. Things meet me where I am. Somebody traveled all the way from Lagos. One day he came to see me. They said, where is he? He said, he has gone for outreach. He drove to where I was doing the outreach. Brought 300,000 naira for me. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Pursue after God and things will overtake you. I thought somebody saying amen. amen. I don't beg anybody. By privilege, I have met and I still meet with people in high position. Find out from any of them. I've never opened my mouth and said, what way can you help me? Rather, I ask them, what way can I help you? What way can I help you? I'm not looking for helper of destiny. I'm an helper of destiny. If you follow God, things will not only follow you, they will overtake you. They will overtake you. Am I talking about someone here? If you are the one, say, I believe. believe. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Through prosperity shall my heart yet be spreaded. Agai chapter 2, verses 3 to 9. When you follow after revival, God assures you that silver and gold is mine. In verse 9, and he decks you with the silver and the glory. In the first church, they were never suffering any lack. Acts chapter 4, verse 34. In the time of revival, abundance of resources come to God's people. Neither was there any among them that lack. For as many as were possessors of land and houses sold them. From now, as you follow after God, you will end as possessor. Amen. Say loud, amen. amen. You will end as possessor. Amen. I say you will end as possessor. Amen. You will possess land. Amen. You will possess houses. Amen. You will not die as a tenant. Amen. Look at me here. When my wife and I first got married, we had only two bags. Two bags. All our assets in life were inside those two bags. And those bags were very wonderful bags. Bags you don't want to identify with, yet you don't want to lose. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so when we are traveling, we put the bag where we are not, but our eyes are following the bags. So in case somebody can want to touch you, you can shout, Barao! <laughs> but today, we don't talk about the houses. No. Following after God pays. Following after God. Following after God. Following after God. Today, by the grace of God, we build houses for people. Can't tell you how many cars given out to people. Not uh, jege jege cows or no jalopy cars. Including brand new. Not ordinary cars. But SUVs. How? Financial fortune. Is what you enjoy. Also, any church that is going through revival is always enjoying financial favor. I can tell you one of the reasons why we are enjoying financial abundance in this ministry is because of our passion to spread the gospel of the kingdom. Planted over 30,000 churches. Keep winning souls every year, every moment. Every year we declare soul winning outreaches not less than three times. And we are currently one. Join this move of God so that blessings can overtake you. I've been told behind the testimonies of people whose lives are changed financially. Why must it be you that is still begging in a wealth, in a church that is full of wealth? Say with me, I won't beg again. I didn't hear you very well. Say it very angrily. Number two, what do you enjoy at revival time? You enjoy divine health. 
divine hell. You shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Exodus 23, 20, 25 to 26. He takes sickness away from you. Because you are a faithful ambassador, winning souls. Health becomes your portion. Proverbs 13, 17. And number three, revival time empowers you to command the supernatural. You become healer of the sick. You are not looking for sick healing again. You become a carrier of signs and wonders. For I and the children which God has given unto me, we are for signs and wonders. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Say loud, amen. amen. Do you know that from today, the sick will enter your house and be healed? Amen. Let me hear your amen. amen. Anyone sick you carry in your car will be healed. Anyone who have an handshake with you will receive supernatural touch. Amen. Set your hands here. I declare your hands as healing hands. Amen. I declare your home as healing homes. Amen. I declare your vehicles as healing vehicles. Amen. From today, you will become the beacon of hope in your community. Amen. Shout, I am revived. Amen. It is done. Amen. I say it is done. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. it is done. Now, as I speak this word of healing to you, because words are conveners of healing. Somebody came to church who had brain tumor. And after the service, they brought him to me to pray for him. He was to be operated the following day. And I said to him, go and return with your testimony. He went in the morning for pre-surgery test. They were looking for the tumor. They couldn't find it again. Watch it. Something is happening in your body now. Amen. That fibroid is gone forever. Amen. Diabetes, no more in your body. Amen. Somebody was listening to a teaching. I was privileged to teach. He was to have knee surgery the following morning. Over the night, he placed the speaker of the player on his knee. They got on there for pre-surgery. They couldn't find it again. Every broken bone is mended now. Amen. If that prayer is for someone, let the person respond right now. Amen. Somebody was said to have kidney stones. In those days when Ibinadion Hospital just started in the university there, was about the best then. And I said to him, they will look for it, they won't find it again. And they got there, they kept searching for the stone. In the same place, they couldn't find it again. And he was teasing them, check here, check here. And they said, we can't find it again. Any disease that came in here with you will not be found again. <laughs> I see leprosy cured right now. Blind eyes opening right now. Amen. Affliction gone forever. Amen. Hear me very well. Jesus specializes in healing all manner. Say with me, all manner. All manner. What kind? All manner. In the system of science, we have eye specialists, ear specialists, and they refer to others in those areas. But Jesus does not refer any sickness to anybody. The master surgeon. The healer in the house. The physician in the house. Matthew chapter 4, 23. He healed them all. He healed them all. Are you one of the all? Jesus went about all Galilee teaching them down their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing what kind? I want to hear you very well. Arrest the devil, say it. All Including that manner in your body. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Luke 6, 17, all the way to 19. Come to 19 quickly to save time. But you can take it from verse 17 at your own time. He healed all manner. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. For there went virtue out of him. And what did he do to them? Yeah. Let me hear you very well. He healed them some, a few, many of them, how many? 
does that include you? Yes. Say, I receive, I receive my healing. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. The verse 16. He healed them all. When the evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed of devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And what did he do? And healed how many? All oh. oh, that was. Can God lie? Oh. Did Jesus truly heal them all or not? Yeah. And what is he doing here right now? Yeah. Are you one of the all? Yeah. Don't tell me, oh, if that pastor knows that how long this sickness has been. God doesn't heal people according to how long they have been sick. A woman with issue of blood for 12 years. One word. 18 years. Been bent. One word. Woman, be thou loosed. And she was loosed. Instantly. Immediately. Stretch your hands here, everybody. I decree instant healing for you now. Instant healing for you now. Instant healing for you now. He healed them all. He healed them all. Medical science is discovered human provision. In the beginning, there was no sickness. Man was living in health. In the face of faith, science is false. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 20. When science gives up, faith takes over. Science deals with guesses, opinions, tests, laboratory, and otherwise. That's why they can't touch you until they first diagnose you. But with God, diagnosis and treatment, everything together, goes together. Faith does not find out what is wrong. Faith tells you what should be right. That's why Jesus never asked anybody, how do you feel? No, he tells you how you should feel. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Jesus never made explanation. He made manifestation. He saw a man with a withered hand. He said, man, stretch forth your hand. He didn't ask what is wrong. Stretch forth your hand. He never allowed people to make explanation. He could the man at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus said, take your bed and go home. He said, sir, won't you let me explain? No, no explanation. Just take your bed and go. Go, go, go. Take your bed and go. Take your bed. He was chasing the man out of the... I'm chasing you out of sickness this morning. Yeah. You don't nurse sickness to go. In medicine, you, you nurse sickness to go. But in faith, you don't nurse sickness to go. You violently drive away sickness. Take your bed and go home. Search for your hands and be healed. That's what Jesus declared. My God, I can see somebody living here this morning totally healed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, quickly as we begin to round up. The scripture asks us a question in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Gilead represents a place of healing. But what makes Gilead is the balm. And so, from the Old to the New Testament, we have what we call the anointing oil. It is the healing balm. In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 38, I mean, verse 27, he said, by the anointing, the yokes shall be destroyed by the anointing. Yokes are destroyed by the anointing. And when Jesus came, he gave his disciples the same prescription. Mark chapter 6, verse 7, and verse 13, to save time. Go to verse 13. He sent disciples. He told them. He gave them power to heal the sick. And they cast out many devils. Any devil around here. They are, they are already afraid of me. As I'm speaking right now. They are already packing their load. 
they are packing their load from your body even anyone you leave sick at home before you get there you will hear the news that they have been healed of. why sickness is packing its load right now affliction is packing its load right now oppression is packing its load right now satan is packing its load right now wave your hand and say bye bye to sickness bye bye to affliction bye bye to oppression begin to declare it it is yours declare it this is yours believe it it is yours thank you jesus look at verse 13 of that passage mark chapter 6 they cast out many devils and anointed with oil is it me who says so they anointed with oil many that were sick and as were anointed what happened to them they were healed so as you receive this anointing this morning what's happening to you oh i didn't hear you very well now when the doctor and the pharmacy give you a pill or liquid syrup to swallow do you ask the doctor hey, so doctor if i take this and what to happen do you ask them do you ask them what do you do you take it by faith if you believe your doctor why can't you believe the word of god when it comes to the word of god people ask some very funny question so you mean when i put this thing on my head i'll be healed that's what i'm telling you that's exactly what i'm telling you what mouth are you using to ask god question when you can you can't ask your doctor when your doctor tells you you even tell your wife my dear remind me oh remind me my, you know my wife is my reminder she always tells me everything my dear remind me you tell your wife because you believe the doctor so much here you are i'm telling you what the word says not what i say not what oedipo says the anointing is not a doctrine of living faith church no it's a doctrine of the bible it's a provision of the bible i'm telling you this morning as you receive this anointing makala shakada dayaba every sickness will bow affliction will clear off strangers will run away shout i receive it thank you jesus thank you jesus rise to your feet and begin to declare what you receive first of all de declare your revival i'm revived i'm revived i'm revived i'm revived i'm revived i am spiritually awakened and declare as well i receive my healing i receive my healing i receive my healing i receive my healing is somebody speaking at all is somebody declaring what he's receiving it's all yours hallelujah in jesus precious name we pray first thing first and this is important are you connected with god or you are disconnected from god who is your source because your source determines your resources does god know you do you know god no assumption you are in church but are you in christ You proclaim to be a child of God. Are you truly child of God? Can God call you his child? If you live in sin, you know where you belong. God cannot be deceived. And I know you too, if you are sincere, you can deceive yourself. In this holy assembly this morning, as I have the privilege to talk to all of you wonderful people of God, I love you. And I want to give you a chance. If you know you are not born again, you've not given your life to Jesus truly, please be true to yourself. Before I got born again, I was a church addict. I was even in the choir. But I didn't have peace. I didn't have joy. I was not born again. I was a moralist. I didn't play careless the way other young people play. Yet I didn't have the peace of God. He was like, I don't drink, I don't smoke. That's not enough. Jesus in your heart is what makes the difference. As I'm speaking, I know somebody is eager. Somebody is saying, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to be born again. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I know you are there. And I know you will soon come before the Lord to the altar here. I know you are sincere. I know you don't want to live a life of hypocrisy again. 
Will you give me a chance to pray with you, please? I want to be born again. Or perhaps you are here this morning, you got born again, but through some challenges, you withdrew. You are becoming cold. Or you are already cold, and you want to say, I want to return home this morning. Anyone in either of these conditions, start coming to the altar, please. Let's pray together. I love you. I can't conclude this service without giving you a chance. Wherever you are, on the ground floor, on any level of the gallery, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. When you are coming, come with your Bible and anything you came to church with. You are tired of struggle. Come on, quickly join those who are coming right now. You have tried drugs. Drugs are not working. You have tried smoking. Smoking is not working. You have tried immorality. Immorality is not working. You have tried to lay hands on many things. If you are coming, run down. Especially if you are a young man or a young lady. Run down. Run down. Quickly run down. Run down. Church, let's celebrate Jesus. Jesus the winner is winning many souls here this morning. Yeah, I know you are coming. Satan, you are a loser. You don't have power to hold down anyone here this morning. If you are coming from the gallery, rush down here through any of the stairs. I'm waiting to see you. Jesus wants to receive you. God bless you. Now, listen to me. I can see not less than 30 more people who need to be here. And you know you are one of them. Stop watching. Stop asking. Hey, so what should I do? You already know what to do. Indecision is greatest enemy of destiny. Your mind is already at the front. You are looking this way, looking at that way. Should I go? Should I not go? Can't I pray when I get home? That is the devil deceiving you. If you are one of the people I've mentioned, and you know it, because today is your day of salvation, you will not leave here without being saved. Take a step right now. Take that step right now. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of indecision trying to hold you down. Come on, church. Let's celebrate Jesus. Clap some more. Let's celebrate Jesus and win them. They are coming. They are coming because today is their day and they must come. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you are coming, I can see some people running down. Help me clap for those who are running down from outside or from the stairs. God bless you. God bless you. Young men, run down. Run for your life. Run for your life. My God, there is no safety elsewhere. Outside of Jesus, there is no safety. Outside of Christ, you will suffer crisis. You know how your life is. Why don't you let Jesus change you? Why don't you let Jesus save you? My God, somebody is asking his friends, should we go? Don't wait for your friend. If you must come with them, drag them to come with you. Hold your friends and come together. Somebody clap some more for Jesus. My God, I'm waiting for the last person right now. If you are coming, run, 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 run for your life. Oh my God, something is happening today. Something is happening today. Something is happening right now. Jesus will thank you. Jesus will thank you. Jesus will thank you. My God. Ha ha ha. Jesus will thank you. Jesus will thank you. Jesus will praise you. Now, I'm about to pray. The Holy Spirit is holding me down. Because there is one more person whose day is today. I don't know who you are. I've called you enough. We're about to close the service. If you remain there, it is your choice. But I admonish you, don't let the devil punish you one more day. Satan is a deceiver. I can hear him telling somebody, don't worry, don't go there. That man will soon be tired. He's telling somebody, oh, service will soon close. Don't go. But I know you are coming. 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 While we are waiting for others to come, all of my friends at the altar here, let me specially congratulate you today for your decision. It's a decision you will never regret. All of us at the altar, please bow your heads in prayer and lift up your right hand. If you are still coming to join us, why not? Raise your hand, all of you in front here, bow your head to avoid distraction. And say this prayer with me loud. Say with me, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me today. Make me your child. From today, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. My sins are forgiven. I am totally free. I am now a child of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we receive these souls into your kingdom this morning. We declare that they are saved today in the name of Jesus. Go 
and sin no more. In Jesus' name. Please open your eyes and say with me, I am now born again. Do it with a smile the way I'm smiling to you. It's a new day for you. Look at the right, at the, my right hand. Go with this church officials. They will attend to you briefly. You receive your prayer of healing out there and the anointing. God bless you. Church, a big hand. As they go. A big hand. As they go. A big, big, big hand. As they go. Thank you, Jesus. Give glory to God, everybody. Take your bottle of oil right now. If you don't have yours, please take some from your neighbor. Help your neighbors, please. Anyone that doesn't have the oil in his or her hand, you can give them just some drop in your right hand. And everyone, stretch forth your bottle or stretch forth your hands as you receive the touch of the Lord right now. So with me, this is a mystery from heaven. Let me hear you very well. For deliverance. For healing. For breaking every yoke. And this morning, as I receive this anointing, yokes are destroyed. Burdens are removed. Oppression is gone. Affliction no more. In my life. In my body. I'm free. I'm healed. I'm made whole. I believe in the mystery of the anointing oil for my total deliverance, my healing right now. It is my portion. I am testifying today of total healing in my life. If you believe, let your amen show it. I release the healing virtue in this content right now upon everyone's life. Receive your healing. Shout, I receive my healing. It is done. Now put a portion on the tip of your finger and on your forehead and begin to declare your healing right now. Raise your voice, everybody. I say raise your voice. Don't pray like a gentleman. Satan must hear your voice. Sickness must hear your voice to live. Don't pray like a gentleman. Pray with violence. Somebody pray. In Jesus precious name we are prayed. Keep your hand on your head. Keep your hand on your head. He said they shall lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. Keep your hand on your head everybody. As this hand is laid on you, I declare you totally healed. Affliction gone forever. Healing yours forever. Let those who will testify this week shout the loudest, amen. amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, quickly, before we round up, you will take a shot of this oil. <laughs> ah, it will go inside and cleanse every dirty things. So we anoint our head and we take a shot of the oil. As you take a shot of this oil, strangers that no medical facility could diagnose will fly away from your body. If you believe, shout, I will testify. Therefore, I release this to you as healing balm, as healing shrub. As you take it right now, strangers depart from you. Now, take it by faith. That's your healing virtue that you are taking right now. That is healing power we are taking right now. Thank you, Jesus. It is done. 
announce to your neighbors, you will soon hear my testimony. Are you telling more people right now? Now, we are ready for the final blessing. Second service people, please bear with us. We have eaten into your time, but I know you will have good time when you come in here. Now, as we pray this final prayer, if today is your first day ever attending church at Living Faith Church, no man's land. I'd like you to step to the altar so you can receive special pastoral blessing. Your first day coming in here. Come on. Every first time worshiper. Come on. Why they are coming? I like every one of us in the assembly. Please listen to me. We are receiving the final prophetic blessing right now. Begin to declare what this week will be for you. Raise your voice. If you are coming to the altar, come with your Bible and everything you come to church with. This is not the time to rush out of church. It's a time for you to receive your, your final prophetic blessing. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Make your declaration. Remember, it is what you say that God will give to you. It is what you say that God will do for you. Don't forget that. Don't, God is listening to you right now. What will this week be for you? It won't be a week of defeat, a week of victory, a week of triumph, a week of winning, a week of moving forward, a week of new open doors. You had the testimony of somebody this morning, this week, that ended God opened the door for him. You are the next to testify of new open door. Open door of new jobs. Open door of new businesses. Open door in your career. Open door to your womb. Open door of marital destiny. Open door of financial turnaround. Open door of spiritual awakening. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. Heavenly Father, we declare your blessing upon all of these, our brethren who have come to worship with us for the first time. We declare them blessed. Amen. They came in here today to join the company of winners. They will remain winners. Amen. You will never lose again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Again, all of us at the altar, we welcome you very specially. This is your first day. Don't allow it to be your last day. Come again and again and again. And you'll be blessed again, again, and again. We love you, this entire church, on the behalf of our resident pastors, also our state pastor. We welcome every one of you and we declare you blessed in Jesus' precious name. Now, our officials will attend to you briefly. Will you turn this way? And please, congregation, as they turn, let's give them a Jesus welcome with our big hand. God bless you. We love you. God bless you. And God bless you all. Come on, are you still clapping for them? Wonderful people. You invited them and they came. Let's honor Jesus on their behalf. Amen. Come on, please make room for those who are joining them. Make room for them. God bless you. Keep clapping as they go. Keep clapping as they go. Wonderful people. We love you. Let them hear you say to them, we love you. Are you sure they heard you well? God bless you mightily. Well, it came to our notice that even though we have been using this uh, church auditorium for a while, it has not been formally dedicated. Therefore, today, we declare this auditorium dedicated. Amen. I thought you were saying amen. amen. The entire facilities in these premises are dedicated. Amen. In the name of God the Father, amen. God the Son, amen. God the Holy Spirit, amen. from the altar here, we declare this entire premises dedicated. Amen. Blessed of God. The hopeless that come in here shall find hope. Amen. The sick will find health. Amen. The oppressed will find deliverance. Amen. The confused will find direction. Amen. The defeated will find victory. Amen. The crisis within family will find peace. Amen. The jobless will secure their jobs. Amen. Everyone who come in here will find out that this is the house of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I mean, if you can see a very bright week ahead of you. Very beautiful. This week, some of you will encounter miracle houses. Miracle lands. Miracle everything you desire. In the name of Jesus. Go in peace. Enjoy abundance of all things. And return here with your testimony. Amen. In Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Wave your beautiful hands and give quality thanks to God. Give quality thanks to God. Everybody, praise him.
give him praise, celebrate God for those blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. In case you came in late after the offering was collected, your day worker will be at various doors as we go out. You drop your offering. Have you been blessed? Let's share the goodness in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Praise the Lord. And finally, on the covenant way of life. Congratulations. Please, let's file out. Gently, gently at the various door, choir.